Karen. I specialise in sexual health and well-being, so I'm used to talking about the big O, but today we're going to be chatting about the big C, and I've got some big questions, but I just wanted to kick off with a simple one. What actually is cancer? Oh, that's not a simple question. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Cancer's essentially a disease that happens when you know, your normal cells stop responding to the normal signals to tell them when and where to divide. They start to grow when they shouldn't and where they shouldn't. And you get sort of, you know, the outgrowth of tumours in different places in the body, can spread around the body. And ultimately, of course, if left untreated, um, likely to lead to death. I know that information that feeds our knowledge about cancer sometimes comes from pretty obscure places. Now, I heard something recently about how Dumbo and friends, <laughs> elephants, are making us more intelligent about how cancer works. What's that all about? <laughs> well, it's really based on this observation that elephants, unusually, don't seem to develop very much cancer. You know, elephants are big animals, they live for quite a long time. And so compared to other animals that are similar, um, they really seem to have some kind of mechanism that prevents them from developing cancer. And of course, that's incredibly interesting. So I don't think we still really understand the basis of this. But one recent observation has been that elephants have lots of copies of the P53 tumour suppressor gene. P53? Yes. Tell me more about that. P53 is one of a group of genes that actually stops us getting cancer incredibly important in our body, it, it, it protects us, and in fact um, it was originally described as the guardian of the genome. That's, that's, that sounds like something from a Marvel comic. I know, it's brilliant, <laughs> isn't it? So we not only have genes that can make us more susceptible to cancer, mm -hmm. but we all can also have genes that uh, make us more resilient towards it. Exactly, Intriguing, yes. and yes. elephants have more of this. Elephants have more copies of this gene, um, that may or may not explain why they don't get so much cancer. I think we're still looking at an association there, but it's certainly interesting. What we do know is that P53 is really very important in protecting us from cancer. Almost every tumour shows evidence that it's lost normal P53 function through, through one mechanism or another. That's incredibly attractive in terms of therapy, isn't it? Because now we have a difference between cancer cells and normal cells. Normal cells all have P53, cancer cells have lost it. So if we can target cells where that P53 is no longer present mm -hmm. or has been switched off, mm -hmm. then that allows us to very specifically target cancer. That would be the idea, yes. Could we find a way of making sure that P53 couldn't be obliterated or turn it back on again? It's very likely that turning P53 back on again in a cancer will have a profound therapeutic benefit. I get a lot of questions about oral sex mm -hmm. and cancer. There was a celebrity story a while ago uh, about somebody who believed that they had caught cancer because they were a carrier of uh, oral HPV. Mm -hmm. Is there a link there? Can you tell me a bit more yeah, about well, that? There is a link. We've known for a long time that um, cervical cancer is strongly associated with infection by a virus, the papilloma virus. Human, um, certain papilloma, human virus, papilloma virus, like HPV. HPV. There's been a huge effort to develop uh, a vaccination um, uh, against human papilloma virus, these genital human papilloma viruses, and they're incredibly effective. I mean, I'm really excited at how well they work. So, you know, I urge everybody with a teenage child to have their child vaccinated. But as research has carried on, we've understood that it's not just cervical cancer that's associated with these tumours. So some instance of penile cancer, anal cancer, and head and neck cancer. What can people do to protect themselves um, apart from get vaccinated? <laughs> well, obviously not have sex. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite an extreme. <laughs> Which is a bit extreme. Yeah. I mean, the initial link was made by people realising that nuns didn't get cervical nuns cancer. Nuns get none, yeah. <laughs> they could get none in all. Yeah. <laughs> Having sex with someone who isn't um, infected with papillomavirus is probably the next best way. But then obviously barrier methods to prevent infection. Carrying the virus doesn't necessarily mean no, that you're no, going no, to get cancer. No, absolutely not. But not having the virus probably means that you're much less likely to develop cancer.